San Antonio starts right now. We're starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. It is calm and quiet there now, but a very different story than we saw overnight. A lot of people in and around our area experiencing some hail, some heavy winds, some severe weather. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. So, Tiffany Huertas joined us this morning. Did, uh, we saw each other out at the parade yesterday. Beautiful time, sunny, gorgeous. Got a little sunburn, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but then shortly after, did you did you guys see hail? No, we didn't, but I still have some confetti in my <laughs> hair. So <laughs> that's what I did see throughout the house. And I know you all saw something similar. Oh, yeah, confetti <laughs> everywhere. But, but Sarah, you were saying hail. We did have some hail, about quarter to golf ball sized hail, especially through the northwest side of town and then even up toward Pipe Creek and Bandera County. But that was a quick moving storm. It moved out and the rest of your day today is going to be pretty nice, although a little windy. So take a look outside right now. Winds are from the northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We've seen a few wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour as well. It is very cool behind this front. It's 52 in San Antonio, but in the 40s up in the Hill Country, it's 48 in Kerrville and 49 in Lost Maples. We've got low humidity in place. It is going to be a beautiful day if you can stand the winds. Take a look at your Fiesta weekend forecast all across San Antonio and South Central Texas. High of 75. We're going to have low humidity today, but the wind is going to be a factor through most of the day, so a bit of a nuisance for any kind of outdoor activities. We'll have wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour throughout the day. Then tomorrow, much warmer. We start off cool at 51, but in the afternoon, 90. Here's the thing, though, a dry heat, low humidity. Coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you neighborhood highs today when those winds will subside, and we'll take a look at some of your pictures of yesterday's storms in just a few minutes. Max and Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. Busy night for San Antonio firefighters. Right now, they're still working to put out an active fire on the city's south side. Alyssa Cole is on Southwest Military Drive and I-35. Good morning, Alyssa. We know that's usually a busy shopping area. Did a business catch on fire? Great question. Good morning, you all. That's exactly what we're working to find out. When we arrived, there was no signage on this building but it, it does look like it may have been a business establishment. What we did see when we arrived were firefighters taking this aerial approach that you all see right now, fighting that fire from above because where they're directly spraying that water is where those flames have been consistent since we've been here. I mean, they've been at this for over more than an hour, you all, and they've been even taking defensive approaches in different ways. There are firefighters at the bottom as well, spraying up top, um, because this fire has just been very stubborn. Uh, the good news is, you know, since we've been here, the flames, they have been able to contain them. No nearby businesses have been threatened. Nothing of that nature. A lot of people know this is a pretty busy shopping area, but of course it's pretty early right now, so there aren't too many people out here, but it looks like it's going to take the firefighters quite some time to 100% put the flames out. We haven't gotten a chance to speak to officials yet. We are waiting, but as we can see, they are pretty busy over there, so we will be on standby waiting for the official word. But for now, I'll send it back to you all. Max, Sarah. And thank you. Listen, now family members of a man who was inside his car for several hours yesterday alerted San Antonio police after being concerned for his safety. This happened on West Commerce and Northwest 25th Street. The man's family who are from Virginia called SAPD saying the man made concerning comments and that he may have firearms. The family told police they tracked his cell phone to the west side. Police pulled him over but say he refused to get out of the vehicle. Eventually, the man surrendered to police and they took him in to interview him. Police say the man does not have any ties to San Antonio. Well, ranchers in our area on high alert four different occasions ending with livestock being found shot and killed. It's a crime that has Bear County Sheriff's deputies investigating and obviously a lot of people in our area trying to figure out what exactly is happening. Deputies say back on April 12th, they got a report out of the Elmendorf Laverne area about cows being shot multiple times. Just the very next day, deputies discovered two more cows shot and killed, another one injured. BCSO tells us the two incidents are connected and also they're investigating two other reports of livestock being shot and killed. Those living in the rural communities say the killings are heartbreaking and they're extremely financially frustrating for our local ranchers. Not our livestock, but it's our community and seeing people go through that, it's not, you don't want that on anybody. 
it's almost like losing a, a dog or something like that especially some of the work that these guys put into their fields and everything like that to keep their animals fed healthy anyone with any information about any of these incidents you are asked to call the bear county sheriff's office you remain anonymous that number 210-335-6000 25-year-old Eric Aguirre from Houston is in jail this morning after being accused of killing a man claiming to be a parking attendant. All of this happening while he was out on a date. Houston police say Aguirre and his date were in his truck when 46-year-old Elliot Nix came up to them and asked for $40. Once the two got inside the restaurant, a waiter told them that Nix was not a parking attendant. That's when employees of a nearby smoke shop watched Aguirre sprint to his car, grab a pistol and chase after Nix and allegedly shooting him. Aguirre is charged with murder. His bond is set at $200,000. Tragic situation coming out of the Army. Three U.S. soldiers are dead. Another one injured after two helicopters crashed into each other during military training. So officials with the Army's 11th Airborne Division says this deadly crash happened in Alaska. Two of the victims pronounced dead at the scene. The third died on the way to a local hospital. Their identity is not yet being released pending family notification. That surviving soldier is still being treated at Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. He's reported to be in stable condition. In Seattle, dozens of people are sick after a bacterial outbreak at a hospital. The Virginia Mason Medical Center is reporting 31 confirmed cases of the bacterial infection since October. The medical center says while the risk of transmission is extremely low for patients, it's investigating the source of transmission and taking precautions to prevent additional cases. Well, severe storms to the south and east while flooding a serious concern in the Midwest and California. Now, here's the latest on this weather trouble that we're seeing across the country. Chunks of hail plopping one by one into this pool in San Antonio, Texas, as severe storms move through the region. Look how low that cloud is right there in the middle. Dark, ominous clouds over the sky just south of Waco, where there was a tornado warning Friday night. This is a very dangerous storm. These storms coming a day after an EF2 tornado hit Hosford, Florida, one of five confirmed tornadoes in the panhandle. The home the Bates family moved into a year ago was damaged. I had just gotten home from work a little while ago and just doing some laundry. I went and got in our shower. Just praying that at least I would be okay. Now the panhandle could get hit again today. In the same areas they got those tornadoes, more severe storms tomorrow, tornadoes possible, certainly some big hail and damaging wind. And then this lifts up into the Carolinas, the mid-Atlantic, heavy rain getting into the Virginia and then DC. It's gonna be a rainy weekend across the Northeast for millions. In the Midwest, flooding a serious concern as winter snow melts, causing the Mississippi to swell. The USDA stopping barge traffic on upper areas of the river until further notice. The governor of Iowa declaring a disaster for two counties. ABC's Elwin Lopez is near Davenport. Major flooding cutting off roads like this one. The only way that residents can get out here is by boat. The local energy company is shutting off gas, leaving people without an answer as to when their services will be restored. The snowpack also impacting parts of California. There's concern the Merced River could flood, prompting the National Park Service to shut down parts of Yosemite National Park. It'll be closed until at least next week. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. All right, time now, 6.08, 53 degrees out. And let's take a look outside with live cam. 53 degrees, a beautiful start to your Saturday, a great day to Fiesta. And speaking of Fiesta, look at that, which Fiesta event's going on today and where can you catch them? If you're not able to make it, we're gonna break it all down in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back and happy Fiesta. All right, we have a lot of events going on throughout the weekend, so we're looking ahead. We're gonna be live streaming the Fiesta Pooch Parade starting at 8 a.m. Of course, we have the King William Fair Parade starting at 9 a.m. You can watch all of them. Just head to ksat.com and ksat plus. And if you're headed out to the King William Fair, well, the gates open at 8 a.m. Tickets are $25 for anyone 12 or older. And Viva Flambeau, the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade is happening tonight. The famous Illuminated Night Parade is celebrating its 75th Diamond Jubilee this year. 
More than 750,000 spectators are expected to line the city streets to see the action, and another 1.5 million viewers are also expected to watch the Fiesta Flambeau Parade on TV. All right, so our coverage starts 7 p.m. with a pre-party, followed by the parade. Steve Spreester, Stephanie Jimenez hosting the broadcast. You can watch it right here on TV and, of course, on all of our digital platforms. So, Sarah Spivey, the big question is, is the weather going to hold up through the day? The weather is going to hold up through the day. In fact, you may even need a light jacket. Oh. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. I just looked over and my iPad is gone out. But I want to <laughs> show you pictures of last night's storm. So I'm going to go over there and try to fix the iPad. You're going to see the Apple AirPlay <laughs> screen here. But just let me try to uh, fix this for you in a second. Yeah, right? This is a little behind the scenes. Let's see what happens when I do that. Hopefully this will work out. Uh, no. Stick around for that. This is a tease. We're going to have more of those pictures coming up later. But first thing I want to show you is where all of that rain is right now. Uh, you can see there's some storms pushing through the Gulf of Mexico. This is that same system that brought us all the rain yesterday for many people. And we'll show rainfall totals coming up in the next half hour. But the low pressure system, which is the parent low for this uh, system, is up in Arkansas right now. And behind this, we've got some very cool air moving in from the northwest. That's why it's pretty pretty windy outside right now. It's 52. We've got west northwest winds at about 10 miles per hour. Mostly clear temperatures are going to fall a couple more degrees here before we see the sunrise. We have seen wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour around San Antonio. And as we start to head into the sunrise, those winds are going to pick up a bit. Here's a look at the wind gust forecast for the day today. So the winds are going to be a bit of a nuisance throughout the day, especially during this first part of the day. But even in the afternoon, we'll still see wind gusts of up to 20, 25 miles per hour. It's not until after sunset that we start to see those winds die down uh, in this e this evening. Otherwise, it is a chilly start to the day. It's 48 in Carville, 51 in Hondo, 54 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 57, 55 in Gonzales, 60 in Del Rio, and 55 in Carissa Springs. Dew points have been falling behind that front, so it's nice and comfortable with low humidity. The day today is going to be beautiful if you can stand those winds. So let me take you through the KSAT 12 hour forecast for you. Uh, at about 10, we'll still be in the low 60s. North winds sustained at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Then this afternoon, we'll be in the 70s with plenty of sunshine. A beautiful sunny day for us. Temperatures will be topping off right near 75 this afternoon. Quite a bit cooler than the seasonable average of 83. Take a look at neighborhood highs. 78 Rio Medina, 80 in Hondo, 78 Stinson, 77 in Converse, 75 in Seguin. 77 in New Braunfels, 75 in Kerrville, and 75 in Canyon Lake. If you're planning on going out and enjoying Fiesta Flambeau tonight, just know that we'll have clear skies. Sunset's going to happen around 8.09. It'll be cool with less wind. In fact, I don't know about you, but I'm somebody whenever the temperature drops below 65 that I need a little light jacket, especially when there's no sun and when it's in the evening. And so by midnight, we're actually going to be dipping down into the 50s. So maybe a light jacket for you for the, uh, everybody going out to enjoy the night parade tonight. Let's talk, wait, walk you through the forecast. Uh, so again, today a windy day, 75 for the high, but tomorrow is going to be completely warmer. We're going to have low humidity, but we'll have a high of 90 degrees tomorrow. So it's going to be much warmer. Monday, low humidity too, near 90. Humidity returns on Tuesday. Highs will be in the mid 80s for the remainder of the week. And by Thursday and Friday, we'll start to see a a chance for a few thunderstorms as well. So I'm hoping that I can get those pictures because uh, a lot of you sent in some really great pictures of some of the hail we got yesterday, some really cool clouds behind the storms, and I'll have a look at your King William Fair nice. forecast mm -hmm. too coming up in the next half hour. All, All right. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Thank you, Sarah. It's 5 617, 52 degrees out. Let's take a look at your lotto numbers. Your pick three, two, three, four, fireball two. Your daily four, one, zero, three, eight, fireball five. All right, your cash five, three, 12, 24, 34, 35. Here we go, Mega Millions, 18, 38, 53, 62, 64. Big number 20, Mega Pyre three. Good luck, we'll be right back.
Good morning and welcome back. So gorillas will be returning to the San Antonio Zoo in just the next few years. And get this, guests will even have a chance to party with them in a newly planned event center. The zoo announced Tuesday that the event center will be the final piece of the first phase of its master plan expansion. All right, so it's really exciting. It's something that's been ongoing for a while now. The event center and the gorilla habitat expected to open in early 2025. The new entrance scheduled to open this November. Zoo officials said the center will sit on top of the quarry walls, overlooking the gorillas and lions in the foreground. And get this, we got giraffes. We have giraffes and the entire African savanna habitat in the background. You can check out all the renderings of the center right now. Just head to ksat.com. And if you're looking at the latest addition to the Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium, you're looking at leopard cubs born on March 18th. Oh, so both the mother and the cubs doing well. Anyone anxious to see them? Well, you're going to have to wait until June. That's when they get vaccinated and they learn how to navigate those outdoors. And for just a $5 donation, all right, listen up, $5 donation, you can submit a name on the zoo's website. So they're considered one of the rarest subspecies of cats on the earth. Tiffany, you got any good, uh, good names? Oh, <laughs> that's my name. Oh, <laughs> very cute. You know what? We'll brainstorm. Yes. We'll okay. come back with some ideas. Okay. Time now, 622, 52 degrees out. Tonight, a brand new episode of Texas Eats at 6 p.m. Oh. Right before the Flambeau Parade. Watch for the secret word to win a $1,000 two-night stay oh. at Hotel Emma, plus a $300 gift card to Southerly Restaurants. Next, we'll show you a quick bite from the show. That's our hop round, so it's an open face sandwich. It utilizes our rotisserie chicken. It has two strips of bacon, tomato, white cheddar cheese, and then a chicken gravy that we make a roux with the smoked chicken fat from our stock. It's fantastic, and then with a fried egg on top, it's amazing. The hop round, there you go, that's the bite. Woo, there's a foot. Bam! This is one of the best bites I've had this year, my friend. Looks fantastic. That looks delicious. You know, you also need to try a Peruvian chicken. Oh. That it looks just like that, but it has the Peruvian spices to it. It's really yeah. delicious. Okay. Okay, I'm bringing it. This They're all good ideas. This is, my only gripe with these is that he doesn't bring us samples. Oh, yeah. No fun. But feel free to bring us a Peruvian okay, chicken. Okay, yeah, next time. Next okay, time. I'm holding you to that. Okay. Time now, 626, 52 degrees out. The Lido Police Department's chief is speaking about the recent migrant pursuits that his department has been dealing with, what is now being advised to those in rural areas. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. Yesterday was such a busy day. We made it out mm -hmm. to the Battle Flowers Parade. You were out and about live. How'd you like it? So much fun. My my favorite part, obviously, is the floats, the bands, but just meeting the KSAT viewers, that was awesome. Oh, my goodness. The KSAT Insider Party, I'm going to shamelessly laud our upper manager. They did a great job setting Amazing. up. Amazing. Oh. That energy in there, it was just so much fun. You know who brought some of the best energy? Some of the photos on Instagram. <laughs> Sarah Spivey. There was a photo I was of armed a, oh, with yeah. a cascarones backpack. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It had a number of cascarones. It was like one of those magical backpacks where you just keep on pulling things out of there. There was tons of cascarones. There was silly string. I had so much fun meeting so many of our KSAT 12 viewers. It was a beautiful day until about 5 o'clock when we saw some storms move through. This is a look at some of the pictures that I promised you earlier. I finally got the iPad to work here. This is 1604 in Hebner. You can see up to about quarter size tail there. This person did an awesome job of showing us a representation, size representation of the hail by placing a couple of coins there. This was a little bit further up north in Bernie. Bernie had egg-sized hail in places, and uh, Pipe Creek actually had two-inch diameter hail. Most of us, if we saw hail, it was just this little hail, about a dime size to smaller uh, hail. And then we also saw beautiful mammatus clouds in the sky behind these storms. And that mammatus clouds kind of look like bubble clouds 
right? They're really cool and they form under the anvil of a storm. But today is going to be beautiful behind the front. A little windy. Here's a look at your King William Fair uh, forecast 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Windy at 9 around San Antonio, still in the 50s. And then by noon, we'll be in the mid 60s. It's going to be sunny. Uh, again, those winds are going to be pretty strong from the north at 15 to 20, gusts up to 30, 35. By 5 p.m., we'll look at our high temperature of 75. Winds will calm after sunset. Here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Again, we're going to focus on the winds today, but still a sunny and pleasant day. Tonight, nice for flambeau, even a little chilly at times. You might need a jacket. And then tomorrow, we're actually going to turn up the heat. It's going to be sunny and hot, but even in spite of the heat, still some low humidity. Coming up, we're going to take a look at neighborhood rainfall totals from the rains yesterday. And I'll tell you what you can expect for Fiesta Flambeau later on tonight. Max, Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for 63 year old Li Wu Kwan, who's last seen yesterday around 1 30 p.m. in a white 2020 Toyota Camry. The license plate reads NFF 2390. Oh, he has black hair. He's five foot six. If you have any information that can help in this investigation, or has to call SAPD. That number on your screen 210-207-7660. Well, overnight, firefighters have been very busy. They're still working to put out a fire on the city's south side. Alyssa Cole is on the Southwest Military Drive and I-35. Alyssa, what is the latest? Tiffany and Max, it's been a stubborn fire, as we said earlier in the show. The firefighters, it looked like they had just extinguished everything for a little while. And just before the start of the half hour of our newscast, that fire just picked right back up. What we're thinking is it could be the wind. It is pretty breezy out here. Um, it's pretty cool. It doesn't feel that humid. This is what we're feeling. Um, this is not what officials have told us because, of course, they've been so busy across the street working to just keep the fire out. That's the issue is, you know, they extinguish it, it gets low, they wait a little bit, and then there it is, it just fires right back up. So it looks like actually the firefighters are kind of reassessing right now. We see them working at the, um, what is it, the fire hydrant. It looks like, you know, they're turning that back on again. Water's pouring out. They had just shut it off. Um, and it looks like they're going back to the fire engine. It's a little further back. You all can't see it, but it's the one with the ladder. So they're going to have to take the aerial approach again to put this flame out. But the good thing is they are making progress, even though this is a pretty stubborn fire, that the flames that you just saw just now, they were in three different spots on the roof, but now it's just one. So they are making progress. It's just going to be a while. So again, those of you waking up this morning, preparing to do your commute in the Southwest Military I-35 area, just keep in mind if you're driving towards I-35, you know, or away from I-35, excuse me, onto Southwest Military Drive, you may run into a little bit of traffic, uh, backup maybe, if you will, because one lane is shut down for the fire units. So just keep an eye out for that. But for now, reporting on the south side, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. We'll be checking in throughout the morning. Well, the Lytle Police Chief says his officers have been dealing with a rising number of pursuits and bailouts involving migrants. Now, he responded to just five this week. Patty Santos tells us what police are advising those in the rural areas to do. But I guess what's strange is, you know, we're 132 miles from the border, so we're not a, I mean, I never considered us a border community, you know, I mean, but when I see this happening, well, maybe we are a border community. You know? We caught up with Lido Police Chief Richard Priest just as he returned from a vehicle pursuit bailout, the fifth one this week. They stopped a car. They, I guess they ran off the interstate there and didn't wreck, though, fortunately, and, and uh, they detained seven Honduran nationals, and then the driver fled on foot, and that's what our resources went. Okay. Pursuits and bailouts involving migrant smugglers, it's a trend he's noticed in the last six to eight months. This one last month, 12 migrants and a smuggler detained. Sometimes the bailouts are literally at their doorsteps. One of my officers, it went right in front of his house. The next two days later, they had one went right in front of his house here in town in a residential area. So it's, it's a little different than we've never had that before. The nine officers on his department are mostly there for support, but he worries about the increasing chances of injuries as they chase migrants through fields and creek beds. He's asking rural residents to help police by giving suspects fewer places to hide by locking their sheds and homes. We try to tell people, you know, maybe maybe you're going to need to harden up your, your location a little more, especially if you're on a 
35 corridor, but we had two in, the, in town, so it, wasn't real, so it really applies to everywhere. Patty Sample's case had 12 news. All right. Early voting has begun in New Braunfels. A $140 million bond is on the ballot. City leaders say if voters approve it, street improvements and other big projects can finally move forward. The proposed bond is broken down into three propositions. Prop A is the biggest of the three. It would earmark a little more than $90 million to fix six streets. It would improve intersections around New Braunfels. And the city's mayor says this work is necessary because of their growing population. And it's necessary to help the local infrastructure. It's the, the widening of these streets is to handle the growth that we've had over the last 10 to 15 years. I just wanted to be clear, these propositions are very different than San Antonio's proposition. So New Braunfels Prop B would use $12 million to improve Mission Hill Park, add parking trails, and an observation tower. The last proposition, C, that would be to build a new library for New Braunfels East Side. And the mayor says the bond will not increase the city's tax rate. Back here in San Antonio, if you want to vote early, you can do so today, Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day of early voting. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on those days. And you can find a list of polling locations on KSAT.com. Election day is next Saturday, May 6. All right, from the colorful floats and the marching bands, so many amazing sights and sounds this year at the Battle of Flowers Parade. Let's take a look of this year's big fiesta celebration. It's the oldest parade of Fiesta San Antonio. The Battle of Flowers Parade attracting hundreds of thousands of people to downtown. We have our old cousins and friends and family here. Crystal Moore came with her family to watch this year's parade. This morning we made tacos. I made the breakfast tacos and you just get everybody together. Several organizations took part in this event. participants this year. We're seeing bands, floats, and of course the Grand Marshal, UTSA's head coach, Jeff Trailer. Jeff Trailer celebrating alongside his Roadrunner family. And the parade wouldn't be complete without... <laughs> vendors also serving up San Antonio favorites, from tacos to chicken on a stick. <laughs> I love coming here. I love the floats. One of my favorite things here is Cascarones. <laughs> <laughs> Viva Fiesta! Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Tiffany Huertas in studio with us. So much fun, and I think I still have some of that confetti in I'll there. I'll tell you what, <laughs> after I got home yesterday, it was everywhere. <laughs> I was like, I gotta pull out the vacuum. It was. But it was fun. It was worth it. So much fun. And UTSA's float. Oh, my God. The energy they had was incredible. It really was amazing. Time now, just about 640, 52 degrees. Next, a cat who weighs 40 pounds. Oh. Now, <laughs> going on a diet, what the owner is doing to show support. Fantastic. All right, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. We know there are so many amazing Fiesta events going on today. What is the weather going to look like? Is it going to hold up? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Welcome back. A Virginia woman who adopted a 40-pound cat named Patches is dieting in solidarity with her kitty. I'm just going to say it's a fat cat. So she's also putting them both on an exercise routine. Yes, she's putting the cat on an exercise routine. CNN's Jeannie Mose explains. Oh, it's Jeannie. No wonder the cat got my tongue. Yes, this is Patches. The nearly 40 pound cat just got a new owner and together they're going on a weight loss program. Well, we're gonna do it together. <laughs> Although the vet pointed out to me that I don't need to lose 50% of my body weight, he does. Patches was surrendered by his previous owner to Richmond, Virginia Animal Care and Control, the biggest cat the shelter ever encountered. They put him up for adoption, describing his body as gloriously gluttonous. Kay Ford won the right to take Patches home. It took two to carry his cage after writing that she wanted to go on the weight loss journey with him. Is he heavy on your lap? The blood circulation hasn't been cut off yet. He's actually kind of comfy. Wrote one fan on Patch's Facebook page, I desperately want to put my face in his belly. 
Others have created memes like the Meow Nalisa after the first week. Um, oh, thank you. Kay and Patches had bonded. So what if he can't fit through the door to the cat bed? He will eventually. It's okay, honey. I'm not laughing at you. The first stop in Operation Lose Weight was a trip to the vet. Patches is already slimming down. 38.8? Okay. That's awesome. Tests indicate there's nothing wrong that diet and exercise won't fix. The cat weighs five times more than Kay's Yorkshire Terrier. When it comes to weight loss goals, let's say a year from now someone says to you, what's new, pussycat? What do you hope to be able to say? I love that. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. For patches. A 20 pound weight loss. And I would certainly like to say the same. Which would make her a copycat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Funny, Kate said the same thing the first moment she laid eyes on Patches. Whoa. Ginny Most, CNN, <laughs> New York. So cute. <laughs> We're rooting for you, Patches. Oh, yeah. So I got to say, Sarah Spivey, you have a cat, Nora. Thank you. Nora looks like a tenth of the size of Patches. <laughs> and Nora's a healthy, healthy cat. Yeah. So. <laughs> you, you guys are what? good. I think we're good. You know, diet and exercise will do patches well yeah. for sure. Was so uh cute. was Nora nervous with the hail last night? You know what? She actually is afraid of the storms. Aww. So yeah. You know, we did have some hail, uh, but it was a brief, quick moving line that moved through. Uh, biggest hail size was found up near Pipe Creek, about two inches in diameter, but we did have some hail out near on the northwest side as well, and otherwise just some smaller hail. That system has been moving out to the east as we speak. And in its wake, we've got uh, drier, cooler, and windy weather moving in from the north and from the west. I do want to show you, though, uh, where the rain fell yesterday because I know we're in the middle of a drought. Uh, as for areas southwest of San Antonio, really Spofford, Pure Salt, and down to Catula, that was the only area that saw some rain. Meanwhile, around San Antonio and southeast uh, parts of Texas, you can see Hallettsville, Quero got about an inch of rainfall as well. Let's take a look at neighborhood views here. Pipe Creek, two inches of rain, and that's where they had that massive two inch hail as well. Lotus, more than an inch and a quarter. At the airport, we recorded three quarters of an inch of rainfall. Chavano Park, more than an inch of rain as well. New Braunfels, half an inch. Seguin, less than half an inch. So uh, unfortunately for areas in the southwest part of Bear County, not much rain, but at least the southwest part of Bear County is doing better as far as the drought is concerned than the northwest part, which did get some good Good rain yesterday. 52 degrees in the wake of that front, and it is a bit breezy outside. We've seen wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. Right now, though, winds are uh, generally from the northwest at about 15 miles per hour, 10 to 15 miles per hour. We have seen a few gusts up to 30, but things are relatively calm at the moment. That's not going to be the case, though, for most of the morning. In fact, most of the morning, we're going to have wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour at times. This is a snapshot of the future cast wind gusts right at around noon today. And then into the afternoon, it's still a bit breezy with gusts up to 20, 25, but it isn't until the evening that we really start to see those winds totally die down uh, after sunset, just in time for Flambeau. Temperatures, as I mentioned, on the cool side, it's 51 in Bandera. Good morning in Bernie, where it's 50 degrees, 47 in Kerrville, 51 in Hondo, 56 at Stinson, and 55 in Gonzales. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast for you. Nothing but sunshine today, 68 degrees around noon, still going to be windy through noon and into the afternoon 75 for the afternoon high and it isn't until the evening where we start to see uh, those winds really die down but not a cloud in the sky today it's going to be gorgeous and comfortable with highs in the mid to upper 70s up out to the 80s out west so del rio you'll be at 84 but here in san antonio will be 75 78 in pleasant and 73 in gonzalez 77 in kerrville and 75 in canyon lake the night parade tonight, you know, not everybody in San Antonio calls it Fiesta Flambeau. It's the night parade, but it is technically Fiesta Flambeau. Parade begins at 715. A lot of people are going to be out and about in downtown before that, getting their seats. 73 and sunny at 7. Clear and nice. Sunset at 809. Temperatures falling into the low 60s by midnight. So you might want a light jacket with you. Dress in layers tonight for the Fiesta Flambeau parade. Humidity will be pleasantly low tonight. 
uh, pardon me, and tomorrow as well. Even on Monday, lower humidity, but by Tuesday, humidity will be back. And it's after Tuesday that we start to see rain chances return. By Thursday and Friday, we'll have isolated showers and storms. And it's that time of year. Some of them could be on the stronger side, so we'll keep you posted. One big thing to notice a difference from today to tomorrow, Max and Tiffany, is that today will be comfortable in the 70s, tomorrow near 90. But at Whoa. least the humidity will be low. Right now sounds perfect for a cafecito and a stroll Ooh, outside. Uh, I think it's just nice weather. Gorgeous, yeah, absolutely. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 650, 52 degrees out. And this is outside US 281 at Loop 410. A slow start to this morning, but so many events to look out for today. All right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, three, four, fireball two, daily four, one, zero, three, eight, fireball five. And you cash five, three, twelve, twenty-four, thirty-four, thirty-five. And your Mega Millions, eighteen, thirty-eight, fifty-three, sixty-two, sixty-four, and twenty. Welcome back. Five people are dead after being shot in a home in Cleveland, just 55 miles north of Houston. That's according to the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office. Right. So this is Cleveland, Texas. Right now we're still waiting for more information from the San Jacinto uh, Sheriff's Office, but we're told this happened just after midnight. Now we are told police still searching for the suspect and they say that that suspect armed and dangerous armed with an AR-15 people living in and around Cleveland, Texas. They're being told to stay inside, stay clear of the crime scene while investigators are working to figure out what exactly happened, trying to find out who is responsible. This is a story that we're going to be covering throughout the morning, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as more information becomes available. All right, now to the latest in your consumer news. So we got the latest GDP report this past week. Growth has actually slowed to 1.1% for the first quarter of the year. Now, the numbers show that the Federal Reserve, well, they're doing what they can with interest rates, really hammering the business environment and the housing market. It appears to be working. Consumers, well, their spending has grown at the fastest pace since mid-2021. And we still have a strong job and higher wages, so we're still waiting to see what interest rates are going to look like. Airlines say travel demand is starting to pick up ahead of the busy summer. The news comes following a slow winter for the airlines. Southwest Airlines reported its bookings turned around by March after a winter travel meltdown cost the company $325 million. All right, hang on to your Bed Bath & Beyond coupons for now. Now the retailer briefly stopped honoring their coupons as they closed stores, but two competitors say they're going to honor them. Uh, the container store says they're going to take them through May for a 20% discount off of single items. Big Lots also honoring the Bed Bath & Beyond coupons through May 7th for 20% off purchases of $50 or more. So don't throw away those coupons just yet. Not yet. Time now is 655, 52 degrees. We'll be right Welcome back. U2 is adding concerts to its first ever stint at the Sphere in Vegas. Live Nation says it's gotten more than a million ticket requests since just Monday, so it's tacking on five dates for this fall. Now, Thursday's increase follows the addition of seven other dates on Tuesday. That makes for a total of 17 performances of U2. And Live Nation says only people who already have a registration code can take part in a pre-sale for the new dates. It's like Taylor Swift all over again. If any tickets remain after that, they'll go on general sale on Friday. I love you too. <laughs> all right, temperatures in the upper 40s in Kerrville, but it's 53 in San Antonio, 51 in Bolverde, 52 Port SA, and 55 in Gonzales. A cool start will be windy for most of the day, sunny all of the day, 75 for the high northeast winds, 10 to 20 gusts up to 30. It'll be cool tonight with temperatures falling into the 60s for Fiesta, Flambeau, and then hot tomorrow, 90, but low humidity. It'll still feel great Sunday and Monday. Rain returns to the forecast by Thursday and Friday of this upcoming week. So if you're like us, bring a little light jacket tonight. Yeah, a little light jacket. <laughs> Tess Fabi, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back at 8 a.m. A lot to talk about. We're going to preview all the Fiesta events, what you need to know. We might even check in with Sarah Costa, who's going to be at the King William Fair. See you then, guys. <laughs> Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right It's now. almost like losing a dog or something like that, especially some of the work that these guys put into their fields and everything like that to 
keep their animals fed healthy. Crazy situation for so many local ranchers. This morning on GMSA, Bear County deputies searching for suspects who shot and killed three cows in two different places. The latest on the search and where cattle are being hunted. Plus, as we take a live look outside, rain, wind and hail pushed through the area last night. Sarah's here to tell us what's coming up this morning for all the Fiesta parades. But take a look out there. It was all blue skies. It was gorgeous out there. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is 8 a.m. It is Saturday, April 29th. Happy Fiesta weekend. Yesterday, we made it through the Battle of Flowers Parade. It was beautiful. The energy was fantastic. You were out and about. How was it? So fun. The marching bands, the different floats. I know everyone worked so hard, so we want to congratulate to everyone that was out there. It's so much fun. Of course, and thank you to everyone who came to the KSAT Insider Party. So much fun. Sarah Spivey, iconic photos on Instagram. <laughs> All the cascarones on the head. You throwing them at kids. It was a whole thing. Yeah, we had so much fun. <laughs> I had a backpack of cascarones and with some silly string, and we were just having a blast. It, the weather was beautiful for Battle of Flowers, a little bit on the warm side, but then we saw a front move through. It brought with it some hail and some gusty winds. Now, today, we're not going to have anything uh, in the way of severe weather. In fact, it's going to be nothing but sunny outside. It will, however, continue to be windy. We've already seen wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour this morning, and right now, those winds are gusting up to 20 miles per hour. It's nice and cool. The temperatures are only in the 50s. It was in the 40s earlier in Kerrville, where it's 51 now. 53 in Bandera. Good morning near uh, Converse. It's 56. 57 in New Braunfels. 54 in Hondo and 55 here in San Antonio. Pleasantly low humidity with dew points in the 40s. Nice and dry outside. A gorgeous day if you can stand the winds. Today our high is only going to be 75. Beautiful and sunny. Again, those winds will be a bit of a nuisance for some folks out there trying to enjoy their fiesta festivities. But all in all, a nice day. And then tomorrow, you know, not too bad. It is going to be warm. It's going to be near 90 degrees. But we will have low humidity tomorrow too. So coming up, I'm going to show you some of your pictures you sent in from the storms that rolled through last night. We're also going to talk about uh, how the weather's going to look tonight for Fiesta Flambeau. Believe it or not, you may want a light jacket. I'll have those details coming up in a bit. Tiffany. Tomorrow is the last day of Fiesta, and that means the party with the purpose is coming to an end. But today is filled with events across the city that you can be a part of. First up, all the pups will be out for the Pooch Parade. Many will be dressed up for the occasion in their best costumes. The Fiesta Pooch Parade is already underway, and it goes until noon. If you can't make it in person, we will be live streaming the event starting at 9.15 a.m. You can watch it on KSAT.com and KSAT+. Plus. Now let's head to the King William Fair Parade, and there's something for everyone. The fair is known as Fiesta's largest neighborhood block party. Money raised will benefit free city-sponsored year-round concerts. We will also be live streaming this parade, also starting at 9 a.m. And tonight is another big event, the Fiesta Flambeau Parade. We're expecting more than 750,000 people to come out for the illuminated night. The parade starts at 715. You can find more details about that and all the events on our website at KSAT.com. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters tell us a house just north of downtown destroyed after an overnight fire. So take a look. This all happened just before midnight. This is the 100 block of East Woodlawn Avenue. It's near McCullough Ave and San Pedro. Now the house was boarded up. It made it difficult for firefighters to put out those flames. We know one person was inside, luckily managed to escape the flames. A fire crew is spending several hours this morning trying to control the blaze due to those high winds we saw. Luckily, no injuries were reported. Well, breaking news this morning out of Cleveland, Texas. That's a small community about 55 more miles north of Houston. We know five people are dead, including an eight year old. So this all happened around 1130 last night. Officials from the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office received a call about harassment. When authorities arrived to the location, they found several victims shot at the property. At least 10 people in that house when police arrived to the scene. All of the victims, those five shot and killed between the ages of eight and 40 years old. The gunman, believed to be the victim's neighbor, still not been caught yet. 
And back here in San Antonio, Bear County deputies are looking for suspects who killed three cows and wounded another in two different places. The first shooting happened back on April 12th in the Elmendorf Lavernia area. A cow was shot multiple times and died at the scene from its injuries. The next day, deputies discovered two more cows were shot on Stewart Road near Calaveras Lake. One died and the other was euthanized. A third was also injured. BCSO says the two shootings are connected. However, there's no trace of the suspects. Those living in the community say the killings are heartbreaking and frustrating for ranchers. Not our livestock, but it's our community and seeing people go through that. It's not you don't want that on anybody. It's almost like losing a, a dog or something like that, especially some of the work that these guys put into their fields and everything like that to keep their animals fed healthy. Anyone with information about any of these incidents, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Office anonymously at 210-335-6000. Election time is here as we approach the May 6 election in our area. A $140 million bond is on the ballot in New Braunfels. All right, so city leaders there in New Braunfels say if voters do approve it, street improvements and other big projects can finally move forward. This proposed bond in New Braunfels, it's broken down into three propositions, much different than the propositions we have in San Antonio. So in New Braunfels, Prop A, the biggest of the three would earmark a little more than $99 million to fix six streets and improve intersections and streets around the city. Now, the New Braunfels mayor says the work is necessary because New Braunfels keeps growing and they need to update their infrastructure. It's the, the widening of these streets is to handle the growth that we've had over the last 10 to 15 years. So Prop B in New Braunfels would use $12 million to improve Mission Hill Park, adding parking trails and an observation tower. And the last proposition C, that would build a new library for Braunfels East Side. Now, the mayor says the bond will not increase the city's tax rate. And we have one week left till the May 6 election. And if you want to vote early, you can do so today, Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day of early voting. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on those days. And you can find a list of polling locations on ksat.com. Election day is next Saturday. All right, time now, 8.07, 55 degrees out. Still to come on GMSA. A bull in North Texas is going viral after escaping a hailstorm. How he's doing now, along with the rest of his herd. And after the break, the Fiesta Pooch Parade is underway. We got a live look. All the pups in Alamo Heights, that's just a few moments away. And a live look outside, 55 degrees. Take a look at that sky, incredible images. Sarah has your full forecast coming up. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta gives back through the founding event of Fiesta San Antonio, the Battle of Flowers Parade, attracting millions of locals since 1891. The Battle of Flowers is where Fiesta reigns. The annual Fiesta event is put on by the Battle of Flowers Association, the only all-women, all-volunteer organization producing events of its kind. The group is a civic nonprofit organization whose objective is to teach the history of our state and keep the patriotic traditions of Texas and San Antonio alive. There are 400 active members and many honorary members who volunteer their time to give back to the city and community. All right, speaking of Fiesta, we got a lot more to come today. The King William Fair Parade starts at 9 a.m. We got Sarah Costa, RJ Marquez out there live on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus. If you are headed out there, the gates are already open. Tickets $25 for anyone 12 and older. And Viva Flambeau, the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade is tonight. The famous Illuminated Night Parade is celebrating its 75th Diamond Jubilee this year. More than 750,000 spectators are expected to line the city streets to see the action. And another 1.5 million viewers are also expected to watch the Fiesta Flambeau Parade on TV. Our coverage starts at 7 p.m. tonight. We have the pre-party followed by the parade. Steve Spreester, Stephanie Jimenez hosting the broadcast, which you can watch right here on TV, and of course, all of our digital platforms. And so even though Fiesta is winding down, you can scan this QR code to take a look at our Fiesta user guide. You can find it in the Fiesta section on KSAT.com.
And I would argue, yes, Fiesta is winding down, okay. <laughs> but this weekend is going to be a perfect weekend for Fiesta festivities as we close it out. I mean, absolutely gorgeous today, a little warm tomorrow, but we'll have low humidity. The thing is, last night we got quite a bit of uh, storminess throughout San Antonio. In fact, here's a look at a picture sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. This was a look at the hail at 1604 in Hebner, a little bit larger than quarter sized hail there. Uh, reported at 1604 in Hebner. And by the way, if you ever uh, want to send in your pictures to our KSAC Connect app of hail, this is the way to do it. Put a little uh, coin there so that we can see for reference how big that hail is. Um, otherwise, we did see some even larger hail up near Pipe Creek in Bandera County, and the rest of us saw some smaller pea-sized hail at times. It was a fast-moving system. It's on its way out uh, of Texas as we speak, pushing into areas nearer to Arkansas, and we've got some of the storminess moving through the Gulf of Mexico right now. But behind this system, we've got windy conditions moving in from the northwest, and it's cooler and drier, too. Take a look at this picture outside. Absolutely gorgeous. A little cool. 55 degrees outside. Low humidity. Northwest winds at 10, but we have been seeing some gusts up to 20, even up to 30 miles per hour at times. And today the winds are going to be the biggest story, perhaps the biggest nuisance to your day during the first part of the day. And we, um, for Fiesta, we've got lots of tents out there, lots of vendors, those kinds of things going to be competing with the wind today. Wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour along I-35 up toward Austin. And on closer view, you can see a wind gusts of 20 miles per hour at Bernie Stage Airfield, 20 mile per hour wind gusts in Bulverde. And throughout this morning, we'll continue to see wind gust potential of up to 30 miles per hour. A little bit calmer this afternoon, but still breezy with wind gusts up to about 20 miles per hour. But by tonight, for the night parade, Fiesta Flambeau, we are going to be seeing those winds calming. Calm winds, clear skies, that means temperatures are going to get cool. It's not all the time that we enjoy a little bit of a cooler weather for a parade here in San Antonio, and I think that's going to be the case later on tonight. First, though, let me get you through your day today. As you take a look outside, it's 51 in Kerrville. Good morning in Rock Springs, where it's 50 degrees. 54 in Hondo, 60 in Del Rio, 57 in Gonzales, and 50. 7 in Pleasanton. Nice and dry air moving in from the north. You do not feel that oppressive humidity. Great hair days for that fiesta hair other than the confetti that you'll be picking out of your hair for a few days like Tiffany and I and Max <laughs> and I have been doing. Uh, as you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, it's going to be nice this morning. Temperatures in the mid 60s and then by noon we will be close to 70 degrees. Abundant sunshine all day long in the afternoon. Those winds will be a little bit lighter but still breezy. 75 degrees for the high right around 4 or 5 p.m. And then tonight it is going to be pretty nice for Fiesta Flambeau. I'll show you that forecast in a bit. Here's a look at neighborhood highs. It's going to be 75 in Holota, 78 in Poteet and Pleasanton, 80 in Hondo, 78 in Bandera, 77 Nixon Smiley, 82 in Yavaldi, 75 in Canyon Lake. Here's that Fiesta Flambeau forecast for you later on tonight. Sunsets at 809. Notice that we'll have less wind and it'll be in the 60s. I don't know about you, I'm a Texas gal, so once it gets into the mid 60s, I need a light jacket. You might too if you're going to be out and about this evening. Tomorrow, warmer, near 90 degrees for the high tomorrow. So that's hot, but at least the humidity is going to be low. Low humidity on Monday, humid again on Tuesday, and then we'll have a chance for storms by Thursday and Friday. Speaking of storms, I've got a map that shows the neighborhood rainfall totals from last night. I'm going to show that in the next half hour, and I'll give you an hour by our forecast for King William Fair as well, which is going on. And can we give it for the Viva Fiesta fashion? I know. Let's give it up for that. Those Fiesta fashionistas have been awesome. Yeah, there. all the outfits yesterday. Everyone looks so beautiful and colorful out there. It was awesome. I love the hats. Yes. Hats are the, the favorite part yeah. by, by far. I don't know what I would pay to see you in a Fiesta hat. <laughs> Not a enough. No. Send them a hat, please. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 817, 55 degrees. Coming up before 8.30, Hunger Games fans are looking forward to another film oh. in the franchise. We've got the preview in your morning spotlight. Speaking of fashion, Hunger Games fashion never disappoints. <laughs> all right, a senior prank in Chicago ends with a cow on the loose. How it all went terribly wrong. We're going to explain in just a bit.
Welcome back. A bull in North Texas is going viral after a hailstorm this week sent him running for cover. So it's all caught on camera, but the owner wants you to know the bull is okay. So take a look. It all happened Wednesday in Dublin near Stephenville. Now the bull named Drago moved. See what I did there? Moved out of the way as golf ball to baseball size hail. That is crazy dropping around him. He luckily found shelter under a pecan tree, made it out okay, along with the rest of his herd. Meanwhile, police in the Chicago area were having a cow over a senior prank that went terribly wrong. High school students had bought the animal and were trying to take it to school when it got away from them. It took off running through a neighborhood. However, police, with help from a farmer, were finally able to get the cow into a trailer. The steer was taken to Hooved Animal Humane Society, and no one was hurt. The students involved were issued local citations to appear in court, but no criminal charges will be filed. Right, time now, just about 6 or 822, 56 degrees out. And just ahead, a popular show on Facebook involving Jada Pinkett Smith is looking for a new home. We'll look at why in your morning spotlight. I am honored to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves, Dean Casca Highbottom. Love Isle Davis. Davis. So, in your morning spotlight, another Hunger Games film coming to the franchise. Tiff, are you a Hunger Games person? Yeah. Okay. It's fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It's a prequel to the other movies. Star-studded cast. Oh, Peter Dinklage, big fan. Uh, he is the Hunger Games creator, Viola Davis, the head game maker. New film hits theaters November 17th. I'm going to watch Viola Davis. I love her. Oh, yeah. Now, Jada Pinkett Smith is looking for a new network for her web based show, Red Table Talk. The Facebook Watch original show has been canceled. It comes as Facebook parent Meta pivots away from producing original content. Pinkett Smith co-hosted the popular talk show along with her daughter, Willow Smith, and Pinkett Smith's mother. The show featured candid conversations with celebrities, experts, and public figures, and often dove deep into topics like social justice, relationships, and female empowerment. Pinkett Smith thanked Facebook Watch on Thursday, saying she's actively looking for a new home for the show. All right, time now, 826, 56 degrees out. Before we go, we want to take a look outside right now. Fiesta Pooch Parade going on here in San Antonio. Oh, cuteness overload this morning. So cute. I love this one. All right, so it's like, a, okay. Love the red, white, and blue. Can't go wrong there. Earlier this morning at Alamo Heights Swimming Pool on Viesca Street, about 800 dogs in their best Fiesta outfit. Dressed to impress, K says Lee Waldman is hosting the event as the parade moves along, cheered on by neighbors with treats and water stops, of course. North Park Subaru will lead the Pooch Parade float with a Pooch Dignitary King oh. and Barkio along for the ride. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday. All right, so we have been covering Fiesta extensively. We had a fantastic parade yesterday, but nothing as cute as this. We're taking a live look at the Fiesta Pooch Parade going on right here in San Antonio. Dressing to impress, it started earlier this morning at the Alamo Heights Swimming Pool. Around 800 dogs are strutting their stuff in their best Fiesta outfits. All right, Lee Waldman, our very own, hosting the event. The parade moves on, cheered on by neighbors with treats and water stops. So I'm excited because of all the different categories. We have best in show, most creative, Best Fiesta Flair. My favorite so far is the red, white, and blue dog, to be honest. They're so cute and creative. A lot went behind all of these. This right. is going to be so much fun. Of course. So the 24th Annual Pooch Parade, hosted by Therapy Animals of San Antonio. Obviously, oh, look at that. Obviously, it is a family-friendly event. So, you know, if you want, head out there. And it's a beautiful day for this. I was going to say, perfect transition to Sarah Spivey because... Yesterday, last night especially, I was woken up by the storms, but you look outside now, it's blue skies, it's gorgeous Perfect. out there, not hot out, Sarah. Oh my gosh, it really is beautiful weather today. You know, a little windy if you can stand the winds, but still a gorgeous day for us today. And honestly, a really good weekend too. I want to go ahead and take a look at current temperatures. It's cool this morning, 55 in San Antonio, 53 in Kerrville. Yavaldi, good morning, it's 55 degrees, 57 in Gonzales and 58 in Pleasanton. This is some 15 degrees cooler 
than how we started off the day yesterday. All because of that front that moved through. Of course, that front did bring us some uh, gusty winds and some hail as well, but uh, at least we're reaping the benefits of a, with a beautiful day. One thing that's going on today, the King William Fair. It's going to be a gorgeous day for that. A little windy right now. Temperatures still at 9 are going to be in the 50s. Around noon will be at 68 degrees and 75 for the high temperature around San Antonio today. Pleasant with low humidity and later on in the evening those winds will be dying down. So here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Uh, again, a gorgeous day today. I'll show you when those winds are expected to die down. Tonight, nice for flambeau. Really nice for flambeau. In fact, you may need a light jacket for the night parade tonight. And then tomorrow it is going to be quite a bit hotter. Temperatures closer to 90 degrees, but at least there's going to be low humidity. All in all, it's going to be hard to find anything to complain about weather wise for us. But here's the thing. There's lots of events going on around San Antonio for Fiesta. Here's our Alyssa Cole with a list of what to expect. Tomorrow is the last day of Fiesta, and that means the party with the purpose is coming to an end. But today is filled with events across the city that you can be a part of. First up, all the pups will be out for the Pooch Parade. Many will be dressed up for the occasion in their best costumes. The Fiesta Pooch Parade is already underway and it goes until noon. If you can't make it in person, we will be live streaming the event starting at 915 AM. You can watch it on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus. Now let's head to the King William Fair Parade and there's something for everyone. The fair is known as Fiesta's largest neighborhood block party. Money raised will benefit free city sponsored year round concerts. We will also be live streaming this parade also starting at 9 a.m. And tonight is another big event, the Fiesta Flambeau Parade. We're expecting more than 750,000 people to come out for the illuminated night. The parade starts at 715. You can find more details about that and all the events on our website at KSAT.com. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters say a house north of downtown was destroyed after an overnight fire. It happened just before midnight on the 100 block of East Woodlawn Avenue near McCullough Avenue in San Pedro. The home was boarded up, which made it difficult for firefighters to put out the flames. One person was inside and managed to escape. Fire crews spent several hours trying to control the blaze due to high winds. However, no injuries were reported. Breaking news this morning out of Cleveland, Texas. It's a small community about 55 miles north of Houston. And we now know five people dead, including just an eight year old. So this all happened around 1130 last night. Officials from the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office received a call about harassment. When authorities got to the location, they found several victims shot on the property. At least 10 people at home when police arrived on the scene. All of the victims, the five people dead, their ages range from eight years old to 40 years old. The gunman, believed to be the victim's neighbor, has not yet been caught. Well, back here at home, we've obviously been talking about Fiesta a lot the last couple weeks, really the last couple months. It is coming to a close, at least this year's it is, and what a fun ride it has been. So tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're set to have a leader from the Fiesta Commission to join us live. We're going to be talking about changes that they've implemented this year, plans for future Fiestas, talk about attendances. I will say yesterday at the Battle of Flowers, it was packed, so much fun. We're going to have a full recap. If you have any questions that you would like to ask the Fiesta Commission, make sure to submit those right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for a full conversation. Oh, well, they've done a fantastic job this year. I know. And, I mean, even during the COVID years, to still manage to have some events and then to come back really the last couple of years in full force, it's been amazing. A beautiful San Antonio tradition. Absolutely. Time now, 8.36, 57 degrees. Still to come, there's a brand new episode Ooh. of Texas Eats tonight at 6 p.m. right before the Flambeau Parade. David Elder's got the preview and how you can win a $1,000 two-night stay at Hotel Emma. Plus, apparently great burgers. <laughs> can't beat that. You can't beat this. Can't beat this. This is Gord. Not a cloud in the sky from this perspective. A much different situation that we saw yesterday. You know, it was all fun and games yesterday until about 5 o'clock. Then a lot of people in our area saw hail. What will the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah in just a few moments. Good morning, 
GMSA. I'm Sarah Acosta with RJ Marquez. Good morning to everyone out there. Happy Saturday and Viva Fiesta, everyone. Viva Fiesta. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're walking the route for the King William Parade and the fair kicks off right afterwards. You can see the booths. We have a lot of food out here, a lot of vendors. And my favorite part about the King William Parade, they have over a hundred, it's a smaller parade. Mm -hmm. It's more right, intimate yeah, parade. Right. But RJ, this is the personality parade. Oh, absolutely, yeah. A awesome eccentric crowd out here. We have artists, vendors, and things of that nature. But yeah, definitely some interesting people that are gonna be part of this parade. Always one of the highlights of Fiesta. And it's gotten bigger and bigger every year. So it's gonna be a lot of fun out here. I am so, so excited. Um, I was looking through the booth. All, I mean, excuse me, all of the different parade mm -hmm. entries. Right. It's gonna be a really good crowd. Yeah. You can see people all already, you know, lined up for the parade. This is a very, like I said, oh, intimate yeah. neighborhood, <laughs> community affiliated <laughs> yeah. parade. Also, we go live right at mm -hmm. nine on our KSAT Plus streaming app. So you're going to want to tune in. Yeah, absolutely. So I have the medal ready to go here, the King William Association medal right there for 2023. And we're going to be streaming this on our website, KSAT.com. So make sure to check it out. Again, uh, one of the more fun kind of quirky parades here throughout the San Antonio area, especially during Fiesta. So it's going to be a really, really good time out here. Make sure if you're not out here with us hanging out, then to check it out on our website. Viva Fiesta! Viva Fiesta! <laughs> Back to you guys. They look so great out there. I love it. And shout out to RJ's shirt. That was <laughs> awesome. All right, you know what else is awesome? <laughs> this live look at the Fiesta Pooch Parade going on right here in San Antonio. Sarah Spivey said it best. If we didn't have the show, we would just be sitting here <laughs> watching the watching. Pooch Parade. In fact, I've got it going on on my other monitor <laughs> over there. You can watch this all day. Now, it started earlier this oh morning my gosh. at the Alamo Heights Swimming Pool. Around 800 dogs are strutting their stuff in their best Fiesta outfits. All right, so Lee Waldman, KSAT's very own host in the event as the parade moves on, cheered by neighbors with treats and water stops, and there are so many different, <laughs> oh, look at that. He doesn't even look happy to be <laughs> there. There are so many different contest categories. We have best in show, best of creativity, best fiesta flair. I mean, this is, all right. I don't it's going to be hard to pick. That's well, a little that's dinosaur. A, it's nice. a T-Rex. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh All my right. gosh, it's so cute. So this is the 24th annual Pooch Parade. It is hosted by the Therapy Animals of San Antonio. Obviously, we got small dogs in a T-Rex outfit, so it's clearly a family-friendly event. And Sarah Spivey, these people are headed out and about. Is the weather going to hold up through the day? It is. Let's just sit in a moment. Those, those puppies. You have to are, smile at here's that. Here's the thing. I'm glad that we are streaming these events because you're not able to get to everything right. for Fiesta. I would have missed that little bright spot of my morning uh. if it wasn't for that live stream. So thank you, Kesa. <laughs> okay, outside right now, gorgeous. But the reason why we're enjoying beautiful weather this morning is because of the system that has been pushing off to the east. This is the same uh, cold front that moved through last night and actually brought some hail for uh, some of us, especially in Bandera County. There was up to about uh, egg sized hail, two inch, <clears throat> pardon me, two inches in diameter. And then around San Antonio on the northwest side, we saw about quarter size hail in many areas from uh, Leon Springs down to Holotus. Uh, so it was a bit of a noisy system, but in its wake, we did end up with a little bit of rain, and that's some good news for some drought dented areas. Unfortunately, there were some that missed out on the rainfall, but areas southwest of San Antonio like Pearsall, Catula, and Spofford got a little bit of rain. Areas along the coastal plain like Hallettsville, Quero, Victoria got some rain as well. And as I zoom in here, Pipe Creek, two inches of rainfall down to about an inch and a little bit more than a quarter in Holotus and in Chavano Park. Very nice rainfall totals there. These areas are under extreme uh, and exceptional drought. Uh, the airport picked up three quarters of an inch of rainfall uh, yesterday, too. And again, unfortunately, southwest of Bear County missed out on the rain in a big way, but still. 
We'll take any little bit of rain that we can get around the city right now. It's been a good month for rainfall. 55 degrees outside right now, nice and dry with low humidity. Dew points only in the 40s. Those winds are a bit strong, though. We've got northwest winds sustained at 10 to 15 miles per hour, but so far we've seen wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour in many places. And this morning, those winds are going to be the strongest. You can see a 25 mile per hour wind gust in Bulverde, nearly a 25 mile per hour wind gust in New Braunfels as well. As I take you through the future cast for wind gusts today, notice that by noon we'll still be looking at a few wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. In the afternoon, winds are going to be somewhat calmer, but still breezy. We'll see a few gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. It really isn't until after sunset that we start to see those winds die down for the remainder of the weekend. So a little bit of a breeze today, but if you can get past that, if you don't mind the wind, it's going to be nearly perfect outside. 56 right now in Bandera. It's 54 in Hondo, 57 in New Braunfels, 57 at Stinson, 56 in Converse, and 55 in Kerrville. Take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Hour by hour will be near 70 by noon. Pretty windy again throughout the day today. 75 around 4 or 5 p.m. And it's going to be a really nice afternoon with that low humidity. Here's a look at the forecast highs for the day today in your neighborhood. A little bit warmer out west toward Del Rio. It'll be 84, 78 in Pleasanton, 77 in Kerrville, 75 in Canyon Lake, and 73 in Gonzales. Generally, highs will be in the mid 70s around San Antonio. Honestly, I don't think you can get much better than this for the Fiesta Flambeau night parade forecast tonight. Right around 7, clear and nice sunset, 809. You might need a light jacket later on tonight with temperatures falling to near 60 degrees by midnight. Might as well bring one just in case. Low humidity today and tomorrow as well as on Monday, but by Tuesday will be humid again. And take a look at the forecast tomorrow. You know what? It's going to be hot but at least the humidity will be low. 90 degrees for the high tomorrow and on Monday. Humid again on Tuesday. Storms work their way back into the forecast by Thursday and Friday. We just got the pollen count in. So coming up in the next half hour, honestly, in the next about 13 minutes, I'll have a look at that pollen count for you. All right, thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 847, 58 degrees out. Just ahead, while some teens aren't sure where they want to go to college, one in Alabama is about to graduate with a bachelor's degree. Plus, that's the worst feeling you can ever. Two brothers in the Fort Worth area recovering after surviving a lightning strike. The dramatic details and what comes next on the road to recovery. And a look outside. The skies and the roads look beautiful today. So enjoy your day. We'll be right back. Two brothers in the Fort Worth area are recovering after surviving a lightning strike. A terrifying situation. So according to Cook Children's Medical Center, seven-year-old Isaac Martinez and 13-year-old Jaden Alvarado, they were playing outside their home Wednesday. That's when lightning struck the tree right above them. The lightning ricocheted, ended up hitting Jaden, causing cardiac arrest. Doctors say it then ricocheted off of him, hitting Isaac. Both boys lost consciousness. They both collapsed. However, they're now doing better. They're resting. Their mother says it wasn't raining when the lightning hit and she was about to tell them to go inside. It's a blur. Yeah. I just remember all everybody praying and uh, telling them, Jaden, Isaac, come on, come on, breathe, breathe. You got to wake up, wake up. Mother's worst nightmare. Doctors advise parents to keep their children indoors when even there is a threat of severe weather. If they see lightning or they hear thunder, make sure your kids stay inside. While some teens aren't sure where they want to go to college, one in Alabama is making headlines for graduating. Leanna Roberts is only 16 years old and will graduate with a bachelor's degree from the University of Alabama next month. She considers herself a normal student and enjoys campus life. Leanna has been taking MBA classes and expects to finish that degree next year. She's also preparing to take the MCAT so she can go to medical school and practice orthopedics. All right, so, so just to be clear, she's 16. She's going to have an Alabama degree. She's going to have an MBA by 17, and then she's going to go to medical school. Presumably <laughs> done being a doctor, MBA, and college grad by the time she's like 25. She's very talented. Very impressive. All right, time now, 852, 58 degrees out.
Now here's a preview of what's coming up tonight at 6 on a special night episode of Texas Seats. While we have those toasting, we'll go ahead and get the beer cheese on the burgers. This is a blend of cheddar, sour cream, ricotta cheese, and blue cheese. And then we usually use like a German style beer for the beer part of it. And while our cheese is getting warm, we'll go ahead and throw our caramelized onions down on the flat top. So these go for anywhere from four to six hours. Onions right on top. You're a brave man. That's the burger at double standard. Whoa. At the count of three, give me some foot. One, two, three. Boom! Triple foot. <laughs> it's beefy. It's all over your face. I love it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. This has got to be one of the best burgers in San Antonio. Welcome back. Right now, you're looking live at the Fiesta Pooch Parade going on here in San Antonio. It's the cutest parade in all the U.S. Look at that. That is so adorable. All right, so it started earlier this morning at the Alamo Heights Swimming Pool on Viesca Street. 800 dogs in their best Fiesta outfits. We've seen some great creativity. What we see? We saw a T-Rex earlier. <laughs> we saw the flower power flower right there. Flower power right here. Red, <laughs> white, and blue pooch earlier. Our Lee Waldman is hosting the event, and the parade moves on, cheered on by neighbors with treats and water stops. That's right. So North Park Subaru leading the Pooch Parade float with Pooch Dignitary King on Barkio along for the ride. They're, they're going above we and beyond. We saw a little butterfly creativity. right now. <laughs> oh, it's just fantastic. So looking ahead this morning, the King William Fair Parade starts in just a few minutes, 9 a.m. You can watch Sarah Costa, RJ Marquez. They are live on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus. And if you're headed out to the King William Fair, the gates already open. Tickets, $25 for anyone 12 and older. And of course, the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade is tonight. The famous Illuminated Night Parade is celebrating its 75th Diamond Jubilee this year. More than 750,000 spectators are expected to line the city streets to see the action. And another 1.5 million viewers are also expected to watch the Fiesta Flambeau Parade on TV. All right, so we have a full schedule. The coverage starts at 7 p.m. tonight. We have our pre-party followed by the actual parade. Steve Spreester, Stephanie Jimenez hosting the broadcast. You can watch it right here on TV and, of course, all of our digital platforms. And every year, it is so beautiful. You've done so many of the behind the scenes, how they prepare for these river parades. And really, this is just the crown jewel of the year. Right? You can't miss it. We'll be back at 9.